something simple now. Let's let's do so a little of transport chemistry here. Now, most vehicles, looking at Nigeria, for example, I'm going to use Nigeria as a case study now so that we can understand the system we are in better. We know how to solve the problem. Now, in 1983, that was during Shagari's time, we had like 150,000 vehicles in Nigeria, according to statistics from government. Now, going back to, I think, 2012, the Federal Ministry of Transport reported that we have around 9 million vehicles in Nigeria. Now, if you, if you check MBS records, that's National Bureau of Statistics record, 2016, 2017 till now, statistically, the last records released is that we have like 11.8 million vehicles in Nigeria. So you can be calculating what they are emitting. Now, 11.8 million vehicles. You and I know that we practice what we call Tokumbo vehicles very well. We, due to the kind of economic situation we find ourselves, we find ourselves importing vehicles which are already used. And you know, used vehicle, fairly used vehicle, they are not fuel efficient. That means definitely they will consume more fuel. That means they will exhibit, exhibit or emit more carbon. Now, if you check statistics of Department of Petroleum Resources to tell you also, that Nigeria needs 33 million liters of PMS daily. 33 million liters of PMS daily. To be fair to that record, all of it should not be used for transport. But most of it is used for transport. Also, we have a population of 200 million people. To answer your question, I'm trying to explain the problem we are facing so that I can answer the question effectively. Now, we have a population of 200 million people. Now, one of the things that makes people travel well, in areas you have high population, people will travel more because people have more needs. Now, if you have 200 million people, that means their need for transport is higher than a population that has 10 million people. Now, Nigeria is not just the most populous black nation in the world. We have the high, one of the highest number of young persons in the world. Now, statistically, young persons will move more than old persons. So that means when you have more young people in a society, they have a tendency to travel more now, when you have elderly persons. Now, looking at it again, what is the major means of movement? It's, these are motorized form of transport, isn't it? We move mainly with, by motorized, I mean planes, vehicles, buses, bikes. That means every time you make use of this vehicle, something is being emitted. But let's do this very, very quick calculation. Now, a liter of PMS, a liter of PMS weighs around, by PMS, I mean petrol, I mean fuel, it weighs around 750 grams. Now, 87% of PMS is carbon. Now, 87% of 750, you're having around 652.2 grams of carbon inside one liter of PMS. Now, when you want to use that in a vehicle, you and I know that it's only air that supports burning. So for you to make that vehicle move, there must be a combustion between oxygen and carbon. Now, to combust that 652 grams of PMS, you need around, if my chemistry is right, 1,740 grams of oxygen. When you now add these two figures together, you're getting 2,000 and something grams of CO2 emitted per liter. Now, when you have vehicles that are not fuel efficient, what do you think will happen? When you have, when I was a fleet officer then, I used to allocate one liter per, ki, for, per kilometer for a bus. Now, checking that, 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 that number, it means that if it travels 15 kilometers, it's going to burn 15 liters of PMS. Multiply that by what we just did now and look at how it affects the environment. Then we'll begin to understand the kind of problem we are in here. And looking at all this situation, answering your question, how can we solve this problem? How can we mitigate this problem? To yes. mitigate this problem, we need to still ask ourselves some fundamental questions. Now, this is the kind of question that a transport manager always asks himself. The first thing is, why do we move? For you to know how to solve the problem, you must ask yourself, why are people moving? Now, transport is a derived demand. That means people do not just go and sit in a vehicle and travel. It is something that makes them to travel. Their need to satisfy something makes me to travel. I want to go to school. My demand is to go to school. How do I go to school? I now boarded a bus. So my demand for going to school necessitated my demand for booking a transport service. Thus, that's why transport is a what? Derives demand. So if you want to reduce the number of vehicles on the road, you now ask yourself, what are people asking for? 
am I going to shut their demand out? You can't do that. People need to move. The economy needs to work. Social things have to happen. So how do I balance the need for their transport and ensuring that the transport itself reduces its emission? First, why do we move? The second question is, what is moving? Now, you see that you are moving passengers or you are moving goods. Sometimes you may not be traveling, but the food you eat was brought to you, right? Somebody had to bring the food to you. If I'm not moving, goods are moving. So I must ask myself again, what's moving? And what's moving too has an effect on the use of the road, has an effect of what vehicle you will use. The three again, you ask yourself again is, how is it moving? What mode of transport is it taking use of? Is it using the air? Is it using the road? You have to ask yourself this question. You have to ask yourself again, the where, the when, this dynamics, if a person is moving in